Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a discussion of The Great Gatsby, which I did not like. And I really, really wish I didn't have, like, I felt like I had to read this book. This is one of those books that is so popular. Obviously there's movie adaptation and it's, uh, you know, the twenties, it's such a like crazy time. And people love to talk about the twenties and like the jazz era and all of this. And if you want to be depressed, if you want to hate rich people, like this is for you, this one right here, buy it because that is all that this book made me feel. And I feel like this is the, <laughs> it's the rich people of this time that were like the Kardashians or like, you know, TikTok families. Like this is the kind of insipid, and I don't mean that in a mean way, like the Kardashians are fine, whatever. I don't care. Like the, it doesn't bother me that they're rich. It doesn't bother me that Paris Hilton is rich. It doesn't bother me that these people have money. I literally don't care. But what bothers me is that we're supposed to look at these people that are rich and have nothing like going for them. They're not good people. They're not interesting people, but we're supposed to be so interested in their lives. And it's like, why? Um, I don't like these characters. I was so bored at times in this book. And I will say like the action ramps up at the end and you're like, oh, school bus. You really went for it there at the end, but uh, not in the way that I was hoping, not gonna lie. I was hoping for something else. So anyway, let's discuss. If you don't know anything about this book and you don't want spoilers, this is about a man who is in love with the one that got away, the girl that he could not have because he was poor and she couldn't wait for him. He was in the war. And so his obsession with her and it is told all through the eyes of her cousin, Nick uh, Carraway, I believe is his last name. And so we get to hear the whole boring backstory of his obsession with this girl and how he can't let it go and how school bus and how he wishes he could change the past. And he truly believes that he can change everything and just go back to this time where like they were together. So that's kind of the whole story. And then of course, lots of problems. So the main characters are obviously Nick, the uh, narrator, and he's the cousin of Daisy Buchanan and Daisy is married to Tom and they have a little girl. And then there is another girl, I'll put her name here, I don't remember. She was like kind of a side character that was like Nick's semi love interest. And then you have Jay Gadsby, who is the great Gadsby. Nothing much great about him. I didn't have a lot of good feelings towards anyone in this book and I just felt like he was super meh. <laughs> but it starts off with Nick going and seeing his cousin Daisy he hasn't seen in a while. He meets her friends. They're all very rich and boring and they sit around and they get to live in the fashionable side of this like area. So there's like East Egg and West Egg and they're on the, like the fashionable side and uh, she married this guy who has a lot of money. So they get to just sit around and be lazy and don't do anything. And she kind of talks about her daughter like she's an accessory. And, you know, it is giving Kardashians in like the worst of ways <laughs> in the beginning. So that's that whole setup. So then we get to uh, Nick's life. He's like lives on the unfashionable side and he is right by this huge mansion. And there's parties at this mansion every night. And he sees all the cars pulling up and he eventually goes and the host is this mysterious Gatsby and he doesn't know anything about him. And he, um, here's a bunch of different things. He got his money through like mysterious means and he's, you know, what is he really doing? And did he kill somebody? And I've heard, you know, he hears all these things about his past, but like nobody really knows. So he eventually meets Gatsby. Gatsby knows a friend of his that, you know, then he's like kind of into all of that, like, you know, that uh, set where they're all like together and hanging out and he's getting to know more of like those people that are coming to these parties and they're all boring. Boring as all heck. One thing I'll say about Nick, he could have been fine, but Tom is the husband of Daisy and he is cheating on her. And one of the first things that happens is that Tom takes Nick to go meet his mistress. And Nick, instead of being like, no, not cool, not interested, just goes because Nick has no spine. Nick is spineless, Nick is boring, Nick is annoying. I was so frustrated with him at different parts of this book because he could have been better, he could have been good, he could have been the standout character, no. And if you're gonna make a narrator character that just knows everything for no apparent reason, 
make him not suck because I was so annoyed with Nick at, and I, especially with the like, oh yeah, sure. Let me hop in that car and just go meet your mistress. I mean, I don't agree with it. I don't agree that you should have a mistress. I don't agree you should be cheating on my cousin. Like it's all gross and I don't want to be a part of it, but can't say no. Don't want, I don't want to be impolite. <sighs> so then he meets Gatsby and Gatsby, of course, eventually tells him like, I'm in love with Daisy. I need to see her. We had a relationship. Um, you know, I, thought we were going to get married, but she married Tom. And so Nick is then forced to play matchmaker for this couple for some reason and make sure that Daisy and Gatsby can meet up at his house. And they do. And of course they rekindle whatever romance was there before. We're not really led to believe that there was much. It was like a couple months he met her, but like she was the nice girl, the one that he wanted to be with. And Daisy is not anything special. She is so like weak. She is awful. Um, and she doesn't deserve anybody. And quite frankly, I wish that this whole book would have turned out differently. But anyway, so I'm not going to like say the spoilers now, but I'm going to talk spoilers. So this is what happens in this book. This is about these people. It's going to start getting, you know, taking the turn of like tragedy soon. So if you don't want to hear the spoilers, you know, don't watch <laughs> Okay, so we already know Tom has a mistress and we know Daisy and Gatsby are hooking back up, you know, rekindling their romance. So it all comes out as like, Gatsby is very much like Daisy. Talk to your husband, tell him you want a divorce. Like this needs to end, we're done. Um, we need to move on together and start our lives where we should have all along. And Daisy is super weak. She doesn't really want to do that. And she is living a good life. She has money. She has, like, Tom may mess around, but like he says, he does always come back to her and she's lived with that and not cared that much up until this point. Like they have a daughter, um, it's just their life. And I think the thing is, is that Daisy was never going to leave with Gatsby. Like she was never gonna be that strong. She never loved him that much but she's super bored and she's a rich lady who sits around on a couch a lot in this book. So she's like, yeah, I'd like a relationship. I'd like some fun. I'd like a, you know, some flirtation, you know, something a little bit, oh, it's a little bit bad, but like, I'm just sitting around, so why not? And so the whole confrontation comes down and Daisy eventually gets, you know, because Tom tells her like Gatsby got his money through, you know, means that aren't like, you know, super legit. And obviously like, he's like, self-made so that's like he's not old money he's new money and he's lower class and all that and so daisy of course just ends up leaving with uh leaving like she goes back with gatsby but you know she's going to be with tom because there's no way she's going to leave her very comfortable lifestyle this gets so much worse because on the way like back from this big confrontation that they've had daisy hits and kills tom's mistress she does not know who this woman is however because Gatsby is the one in the car with her, you know Gatsby is going to claim that he was the one who, like he is willing to take that and like say that he was the one who hit this woman so that Daisy doesn't have to deal with that. Daisy would not do this for him. Daisy does not care about him. Daisy is trash. So Daisy, like in the car driving, hits this girl, the mistress, kills her. They keep driving, Daisy just keeps going. And um, Gatsby's gonna cover it all up. Of course, Tom and Nick and the other chick, I can't remember, um, they all are right behind them in the car and they find the dead mistress and, um, and her husband, of course, because she was also married is like devastated and horrified. And Tom is just like, oh my gosh, what happened? And he of course thinks that Gatsby did it, but Nick is very like quickly figures it out that it was Daisy. So Tom the whole time is like, oh my gosh, Gatsby killed her. And this is so awful. And it's so terrible. And they're searching for this very particular car that Gatsby has. And Nick is um, starting to figure it out. Tom is figuring it out. Everyone kind of is like, oh yeah, that yellow car, it's so distinctive, blah, blah, blah. So they go back, Daisy goes back to her house. Nick goes to his house. Gatsby goes, you know, he's waiting to make sure Daisy's okay, ick. And everyone kind of goes their separate ways. And you know that Nick, or, uh, sorry, you know that Daisy and Tom are gonna just leave. like. He's lost the mistress. He thinks he, you know, was in a little bit of danger of losing his wife. So he's kind of just going to go take care of things, secure his situation and move on. Gatsby is under this horrible, you know, delusion of, oh uh, yeah, you know, she's gonna, still going to leave him. She's still going to leave him. No. So Tom tells the husband of the mistress 
that it was Gatsby. And he of course goes and spoiler, 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 he shoots Gatsby and then himself. So Gatsby dies. Gatsby's dead. That's the end. That's the end of that. Ah, don't care. Enter in the most sympathetic character of the whole story, Gatsby's dad, who actually made me feel something. I felt so sad for him. And he was so like pathetically happy about his like son being able to accumulate this wealth and so proud. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is so sad. Like what he could have been and then wasn't and just sadness. But I did feel a lot of sympathy for the dad. Dad's the standout character here. So no one comes to Gatsby's funeral except for Nick, the dad, and then one other person. It's very sad. He, you know, no one now that he's, you know, kind of like they assume that he had something going on with the mistress character, even though he didn't, obviously he didn't even know her and um, all of that. So he's kind of like having his name drugged through the muds. Like nobody goes to the funeral and obviously Daisy and Tom have like just booked it out of there. Can't be bothered. And later, um, you know, like there's a very sad funeral. Nick is sad. Everybody's sad. And people are, you know, just all of his so-called friends don't care, aren't around, of course, because they were only with him because of money and parties. Because that's the kind of people that you're around with these books and this one in particular, because it's terrible and they're all terrible and I don't like it. So later, Nick confronts Tom on the street like they see each other and Nick's just going to walk away. But Tom sees him. He's like, oh, you're too good to shake my, shake my hand. And he's like, yeah, oh, whatever. And you're like, no, of course he is not. Nick is totally weak, like weak, spineless like ridiculous. So Nick talks to him and Tom's like, well, yeah, I told the husband that it was him. And I, you know, that's why he shot Gatsby. And it's a good thing. And Nick does not say Daisy was driving. He could have said it was your wife who killed your mistress. He could have said that, but no, you know why? Because he doesn't care about anybody. Like he still thinks, oh no, we'll, we'll just protect Daisy. And the like protection of Daisy from anything bad happening is one of the worst aspects of this book because Daisy was trash and Daisy does not deserve it. But people put this like, oh, Daisy is the good girl. I'm like, no, Daisy is awful. She has no charm. She has nothing. She is that type of girl that like, oh yeah, I look nice and I can talk nice when I want and I can be agreeable. She is not special. And the fact that like these characters are written to where you're supposed to feel anything for them is ridiculous. They're not written sympathetically. They're not written like they're clever. Like you're not supposed to like... Gatsby you're supposed to be drawn to this character he's supposed to have like this mystique and like oh he's so interesting I'm like no he's this guy who can't let go of a girl he knew years ago he's just obsessed with her for no reason and that's his downfall and her downfall should have been her you know having to deal with the fallout from her romance with this guy that she you know dumped because she wanted to be with somebody with money <sighs> alas so yeah it's kind of just ends you know, how you'd expect, like Nick kind of just reflecting on everything and he leaves and Nick isn't good either. He had started this relationship with this girl and he's like, eh, I'm over it. And he also had a girl back home that he had been connected with that he was sending letters to. And Nick just, he at one point claims that he's the only honest character in this book, which is laughable for all the stuff that he keeps to himself, doesn't say, doesn't let on that he knows, um, doesn't actually help anybody in this situation. So yeah, get over yourself, Nick. You're not great. Okay, I finally found it. This pretty much sums up the whole book. They were careless people, Tom and Daisy. They smashed up things and creatures and then retreated back into their money or their vast carelessness or whatever it was that kept them together and let other people clean up the mess that they had made. And if that sounds like a really good book to you to read, <laughs> then you can read this book. I will say the writing is good. Uh, if his goal is to make you hate these characters, well done, I did. And I'd rather feel rage and like, just be super annoyed than be bored. So I will say there's that, though there were tedious parts of this book. Um, not for me, I just don't like it. I just don't like, and I think this is a preference thing. I don't like reading about unlikable characters. I don't like having nobody I can root for. Um, I. I knew um, what was going to happen. It wasn't like this was a big surprise. I feel like this is kind of a well-known ending, uh, kind of a Ju Romeo and Juliet kind of style thing where most people know what's going to happen. So it wasn't like I was shocked about the death or anything. Um, and it felt inevitable. Like there's no way that they were going to be happy. And I didn't feel like they deserved it anyway. So that's my take. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's quite a hot take. I think a lot of people don't love this book, but it is a popular read. It definitely gave me... Um, Catcher in the Rye like feeling because I didn't like that one either and also super unlikable characters so 
yeah. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you love this book, you can, we can talk about it in the comments. I definitely understand that this is a popular book. It's just not for me at all. <laughs> so let me know and I will talk to you guys again soon.